Okay, so this is the video about page 19 to 25 of your book. Like previous videos, I'm going to explain the difficult vocabulary first, and then I'll talk about the plot and characters. Let's take a look at the vocabulary first, page 19. So it's about time for the inspector to question Sheila. And the inspector explained where Eva went after she was fired by Mr. Burling. Let's take a look at these words. Number one, lodgings. Lodgings. So lodgings means a set of room with furniture. So Eva rent a very, very small room, but with some furniture in it. So she lived in lodgings. And number two, relatives. Eva had no relatives, means um, she had no family members to help her. And number three, desperate, desperate. So she was feeling hopeless, hopeless after she lost her job at the Berlin and Company. And then Sheila's reply in her stage direction, warmly, warmly. So she was trying to show her friendliness still because she didn't know that um, the rest of the thing would be related to her. So she still replied warmly showing her friendliness number five existence existence so it means the state of living it means the living condition of those young working class lower class women the living condition and the living condition for these women was really bad they had no money no relatives they were hopeless okay number six warehouses warehouses so apart from factories, there were people working in factories, making stuff, making goods. There were some other people working in warehouses. And warehouses were large buildings for storing products. So they weren't places to produce the products. They were places for storing the products. So that's warehouses. And then number seven notion notion it means um your belief your concept what you believe in now let's continue with this part take a look at these words so number one pennies pennies originally penny means the coin but it can also mean a small sum of money so very little money and then so those young working class women would count their pennies would count their money in their dingy little back bedrooms. So dingy means gloomy, dark, very uncomfortable. A bedroom that is uncomfortable and dark and small. The third word here, archly, archly. Sheila was talking to Gerald archly. It means playfully, playfully. Like Sheila's personality, very pleasant, always playful. And then number four, get taken, get taken. It means being hired by a company, being hired. And number five, short-handed, short-handed. It means not having enough employee in a company. That's the meaning for short-handed. A company doesn't have enough staff. Here in this part, two words that I want you to pay attention to. Number one, admitted, admitted. It means um, you agree and you tell that it, it's true. So you admit that it's true. And then the next one, agitated, agitated. It means you're feeling nervous, nervous. So when the inspector talked about a customer complaining about Eva, and suddenly Sheila felt nervous, agitated. And then take a look at these two words. Half stifled sob. It means it's like a, a kind of crying um, without making a lot of noise. And also at the same time, you can barely breathe. So you cry and you're holding your breathing and you don't make a lot of noise. So that kind of crying, we can call it half stifled sob. The next word, speculatively, speculatively. It means you're so focused on someone, you're so engaged. So the inspector looked at Sheila speculatively, meaning that he focused on Sheila without taking his eyes off her and then let's continue with these words number one steadily steadily it means in a regular and controlled manner not being angry not being happy but just very controlled 
Very calm, very formal. And next one, promising, promising. A promising life means a、uh, a person should have a very successful future. Promising. The third word, retort, retort. It means is an angry reply. So Mr. Burling almost made a very angry reply. A retort. And last phrase. All in good time. All in good time. So when Gerald asked for the photograph to look at, and the inspector said, "All in the all in good time," it's a phrase and expression asking people to be patient because soon something will happen. So the inspector asked Gerald to be patient, and soon he would give him the photograph to see. And then the story continues. Let's take a look at these words. Dryly, dryly. Um, when Eric tried to say that he had enough of all these questioning and about news, and the inspector simply said, "I dare say, dryly." So dryly means seriously, without any feelings. And then Eric、uh, said that he'd better turn in. Turn in means go to bed, go to bed. But the inspector said no because、uh, he might needed to turn out. Turn out. It means to be present again. So the inspector asked Eric not to go to bed. And then,、uh, hearing this, Gerald felt that the inspector was a little bit heavy-handed, heavy-handed. So it's a little bit controlling. Even Eric wanted to go to bed, and the inspector didn't allow. So Gerald felt that the inspector was a little bit controlling, very forceful. It, so it means so the words heavy-handed means controlling, forceful. And then take a look at these phrases, easy with me, easy with me. It means being gentle. So the inspector meant if everyone cooperated and、uh, answered his question honestly, being very gentle to him, then he would be gentle to everyone. So he wouldn't cause anyone trouble if everyone was cooperative. Okay, and then the next phrase, draw the line, draw the line. It means. Not drawing a line, literally, but setting the limit. Setting the limit. When you draw a line, you set the limit. Like here,、uh, how to identify respectable citizens or a criminal, and the inspector said it's hard to define. It's hard to give a definition. It's hard to set the limit. It's hard to draw the line. Okay, so this is what he,、uh, the inspector, meant. And then the next word, fortunately, fortunately, simply means luckily, luckily. And then let's take a look at these words.、Um, Sheila came back and said,、um, "Mr. Brown didn't seem to think it amounted to, amounted to, amounted to means having effect on something. So it means that Mr. Brown didn't think that、uh, Sheila complaining about Eva was a big deal. So it's no big deal. So Mr. Brown thought that." It didn't amount to much, no big deal. Okay, and then the next word, steady, steady job. So a stable job, not changing much. Stable, steady. And then next word, miserably, miserably means very sad. So she learned more about Eva, and she was very sad, miserably. The next word, entirely, entirely, it means completely. So the inspector said it wasn't entirely her fault. Not completely Sheila's fault, and the number five, get rid of, get rid of. Here it means fire, fire the girl, and the number six, persuade, persuade. So it means convince. You talk somebody into something, so you persuade someone, you convince someone, you ask someone to do something and believe in you, and the number seven, account. Account here means a customer account. If They close the account, then they are not going to shop here anymore. Okay, this part there's only one word: furious. Simply means mad and angry. Okay. And Sheila continued to explain her encounter with Eva Smith, and here are the words that I want you to take a look. Number one, insisted, insisted. It means not giving up. So Sheila insisted to try on a, a dress that didn't fit her. And then the next word: workroom, workroom. So it's a room for people to work at, and because Millward is a place for clothes, so a workroom in this shop is actually a room for sewing, for making the clothes. 
Okay, and then the next one, impertinent, impertinent, it means rude. And then she that breaks down in the stage direction, it means she was unable to control her feelings. She almost cried. And the last word here, jealous, meaning being envious of what the other people have. So Sheila was envious, was jealous about、uh, Eva Smith's beauty. Here,、uh, the almost last part of、um, Act One, Eric, after hearing what Sheila explained, she said, "It's a bit thick. It's a bit thick." This whole phrase means unfair. It's annoying. And then Sheila. It、replied immediately, storm, stormily, stormily. It means angrily. She was angry when Eric said that、um, this was unfair to Eva Smith and it was annoying. Okay, and when the inspector mentioned about Daisy Renton, the new name of Eva Smith, Gerald startled, startled. It means he was shocked. He was shocked, and then. Uh, a moment later, he pulled himself together. It means he became calm again. And then the next word, tantalus, tantalus, is a stand for decanter, decanter. So like for bottles of wines. So Gerald walked to the tantalus, so the stand where the, the wine was put. So these are all the difficult words、um, on page nineteen to twenty-five. And now let's take a look at the plot. So here comes to the part where the inspector started questioning Sheila, and let's see what happened after Mr. Brown fired Eva. And from the description of the inspector, we've learned that the next two months she was out of work after Mr. Brown fired Eva. That was the end of September, so October, November, Eva had no job. And because her parents both were dead, and she had no home to go back to at the countryside, and so she just had to stay in this town, at Bromley, and because、uh, Eva didn't earn much from the Burton and Company, and so without work, without money, and she had to live in her own lodging, the small room with furniture, and there were no relatives to help her. Very few friends, very lonely, no money for food, and so to Eva Smith, this situation, this condition was super hopeless, very desperate, and actually Sheila agreed, and Sheila thought that it was such a shame that there were young women living in condition like this, and then the inspector explained that it was super common for all the young lower class, working class women living in a condition like this in the town. And because there were young women like this, that's why factories and warehouses,、um, like Mr. Burning's company, could look for very cheap labor. Because with very little money, these young women would still work for a company like Burning and Company. But to Sheila, these girls they weren't cheap labor; they were people. So this was. Uh, how Mr. Berling and Sheila view women differently. To Mr. Berling, women were just cheap labor. But for Sheila,、um, she was a girl. She was a young girl as well. So she felt sorry for these young women, and so she thought that these women, they're they were just normal people, and they should be equally treated like all other men. And they were not cheap labor, and that's what the inspector believed as well. And so the inspector suggested to put themselves into these young women's shoes. Imagine you were one of them,、um, that you only have very little money every week, and you were at your own little room, very dark, very、uh, uncomfortable small rooms, and this is where you live. And Sheila imagined that, and she agreed as well. And then the inspector continued to explain what happened to Eve after she was fired by Mr. Berlin, and luckily she was taken, she was hired by a shop called Millwards, and Millwards was a shop that Sheila and her mother always visited. She was just there the afternoon, to grab some new clothes for herself to please Gerald. That's why she said to Gerald for your benefit. And so Sheila agreed that it was really lucky for Eva Smith to be hired by Millwards 
because it was a shop that served、um, upper class people. And the inspector agreed. That was December 1910, three months after Eva was fired by Mr. Burling. And at that time, many people suffered from influenza, so flu. And they were sick and they couldn't work. And so Millward's was lack of staff. They were short handed, not enough people working for them. That's why even Eva was fired by another company, Millward's still. Hired her. And it was a better job than working in the factory because every day Eva could enjoy being among those pretty clothes. So, to Eva, it was definitely a fresh start. Without explaining further by the inspector, Mr. Brown immediately predicted that Eva got herself into trouble. If not, the inspector wouldn't be here questioning them. So, Eva was hired by Millwards in December 1910, and after about a couple of months, actually just around two months, in January 1911, the end of January last year, there was a customer who complained about Eva Smith. And Mr. Burton thought that Eva was causing trouble again, like how she started a strike at his company, but this time the inspector said, Even the people at Millward's said that she didn't do anything wrong. Even people at Millward's didn't know why this customer complained about her. And when Sheila heard of this, she was nervous. Why? Guess who complained about Eva? And Sheila was very nervous and she asked how that girl looked like. And so the inspector showed. Sheila, the photo of Eva Smith. And at that point, Sheila immediately recognized Eva's face from the photograph. Remember in the previous video, we have mentioned that when the inspector called Eva Smith by her name, Sheila didn't remember this name. But when Sheila saw the photograph, she immediately recognized and she was very upset. She cried and left the room. And Mr. Berling, Eric, and Gerald, they were all shocked. And Eric immediately could guess that his sister could recognize Eva Smith from the photograph. And Mr. Berling was so mad at the inspector because he thought that the inspector upset Sheila. But then the inspector said he didn't do anything. It was Sheila who upset herself. And so Gerald proposed to go and find her back. And Mr. b u r l i n g said he would do that. And he was so angry at the inspector and told the inspector that he has messed up their family celebration. But the inspector replied that a girl has just died. Compared to this dinner, Eva Smith's life was messed up by all these people as well. So think about it which one is worse? Messing up a family celebration. Or messing up one's life. So, this is what the author, J.B. Priestley, wanted you to think about. All Mr. b r o w n i n g cared was the family celebration, but the inspector cared about the life of a girl. So, Mr. b r o w n i n g went out to look for Sheila, and Gerald at this moment asked for the photograph to see it again, and the inspector refused one more time, saying that asking Gerald to be patient and that soon he would show Gerald the photo. The inspector refused to give Gerald the photo because that was how he worked. He liked asking questions one by one. And the inspector even hinted that he was going to question Gerald and if Gerald had anything to tell him. And at that point, Gerald felt really uncomfortable because he didn't want to get involved. And at the same time, Eric felt really uncomfortable as well, saying that he had enough of all this chaotic situation. And so he explained that he had a few drinks. And he had a headache and he wanted to go to bed earlier. But the inspector asked him to stay. Why do you think Eric wanted to excuse himself? Is it really because he had a headache? Or was he worried that he would get involved as well? And why didn't the inspector allow Eric to go to bed? Because to the inspector, he would question Eric soon. So he said it was better for him to stay. 
then going back to that and be present again. And when Joe heard that, he thought the inspector was really forceful, very controlling. The inspector didn't even allow Eric to go to bed. And the inspector replied, say that if everyone was cooperated, then he would be easy to everyone. And Joe didn't like this tone and felt like the inspector treated them like criminals instead of respectable citizens. But the inspector thought that there wasn't a big difference between respectable citizens and criminals. And it's very hard to define and it's hard to draw the line. It's hard to set the limit to identify who was respectable citizen and who was criminal. Do you agree? Do you think that some respectable citizen could be criminals too? Like the Burning family. And Joe teased the inspector saying that it wasn't the inspector's job to define who should be the respectable citizen and who should be the criminals. And the inspector explained his job was to question and find out the answer. And at that point, Sheila re-entered the room. And Sheila asked the inspector whether the inspector knew it all the time. And the inspector said yes, he admitted, because Eva wrote it in the diary about this incident. And the inspector could guess it was Sheila who complained about Eva and got her fired. And Sheila told Mr. Burling about this incident. And to Mr. Burling, he didn't think that it's a big deal. It was just a complaint to fire a girl. So Sheila didn't commit any big crimes. But to Sheila, she felt really bad for the girl, for Eva Smith. And the inspector agreed because it was her last real job she had. After she was fired twice, once by the Berlin company, another one time by the Millwards. After that, she changed her life. What does it mean? If we continue to read Act 2, we'll find out. And Sheila asked whether she was responsible. The inspector said it was partly her responsibility, but not completely. Do you agree? And you can see that Sheila was so different from Mr. Burling. Because from the beginning until the end, Mr. Burling never admitted his own responsibility and own blame. He didn't take any blame. But for Sheila, she cared a lot whether it was her responsibility. So that's the difference between Sheila and Mr. Burling. And so Sheila continued to explain what happened to um, Eva at Millwards. Sheila threatened the manager at Millwards, saying that if he didn't fire Eva Smith, she would cancel their accounts at Millwards. Sheila would persuade her mother to cancel the account. And be careful, account here is a little bit different from what we know. Because at that time, people like them from the upper class family, some well-known people, they do not need to pay every time when they buy something. They just save the credit in the account, like using credit cards these days. And then at the end of each month, the shop will collect the account, like you have to pay for your credit card bill at the end of the month now. So that is what account means here. So if Sheila threatened the shop to close their account, meaning that they are not going to shop at Millwards anymore. And the inspector continued to question why Sheila did that. And Sheila explained that she was very angry at that time. She said she was looking at herself in the mirror, but she saw Eva Smith smiling. And that made her angry. And it wasn't even Eva Smith's fault. And she was so ashamed of herself and worried that Gerald would look down on her when she admitted that she lost her temper at the shop by that time. But Gerald was surprised that Sheila would say that. And he said that he wouldn't see Sheila like that. The inspector interrupted saying that they could settle up their relationship later. And he asked Sheila to continue to explain what happened at the shop. And so Sheila explained, saying that she actually saw a dress. But Mrs. Sperling didn't think that Sheila would look good in the dress. Even the assistant agreed with Mrs. Sperling. But Sheila insisted to try the dress on. So Eva Smith brought the dress from the workroom 
and Eva Smith、uh, talked to Miss Frances. Eva Smith pretended to put on the dress, and she thought that the dress just looked so good on her because Eva was pretty. She had big eyes, but Sheila insisted to try that dress on. And when Sheila tried that dress, she caught Eva Smith smiling at Miss Frances. It seemed like she was teasing her, saying that Sheila looked really awful in the dress, and that made Sheila really angry. Because she was so jealous at Eva Smith's beauty, at that moment Sheila couldn't control her own emotions, and she thought that complaining about Eva Smith would be no big deal, because Eva Smith looked like a strong-willed person, someone who could take care of herself. That's why Sheila decided to complain about her, and made Millward fire Eva Smith. An inspector suggested that Sheila use her own identity and power. The daughter of Mr. Burling, because Mr. Burling was so well known in the town, to get Eva fired, and she replied that at that moment she didn't think it was a terrible thing to do to get someone fired, but now when she knew that Eva Smith was dead, she felt really bad, and she said if she could help Eva Smith now she would. But the inspector reminded her it was too late because Eva Smith was dead already, and when Eric heard this, he found it very annoying and unfair for Eva Smith to get sacked again. And Sheila was so mad and upset, and asked Eric to shut up, because Sheila felt very sorry already, and that was the only time she did something so bad, and she would never do it again. And then she realized why people at Millwoods. Looked at her so differently, and with all those weird looks, now she understood, because she was the one who got Eva fired, out of jealousy. And then he in- inspector continued, explaining that Eva Smith was fired twice, once by the Berlin and once by Millwards, and because of that, she couldn't find any job anymore, because probably all the factories in town. With owners who knew Mr. Burling, knew that Eva Smith led a strike at the factories. Those people wouldn't hire Eva Smith, worrying that she would cause the same trouble again in their own factories. And the second time, she lost another job at Millwards. So any shop similar to Millwards would definitely not hire Eva Smith again. So to Eva, she really had no more chance to get a stable job or a decent job. And so she had to change her name into Daisy Renton, and when the inspector mentioned Daisy Renton, Gerald was shocked. He said he didn't know Eva Smith, but when Daisy Renton was mentioned, he was shocked. What does it mean? And Gerald needed wine to calm himself. And at that point, the inspector needed to find Mr. Burling, so he excused himself, leaving only Sheila and Gerald. At the room, because Eric took the inspector to the drawing room, and that's the end of not the at one, but the end of the questioning part of Sheila. There's still one more page before at one ends. We'll look at it in the next video because now it's Gerald's turn. So that's it of this video. We've learned the relationship between Mr. Burling and Eva Smith, and we have learned. The relationship between Sheila and Eva. We are going to learn about the relationship of Eva with other members in the family soon. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.